Hello gamers and welcome back to another episode of Solo Spelunking. Um, it is Sunday evening and what better way to end the weekend and prepare for an upcoming work week than to finish off the weekend with a nice little solo RPG session. All right, so small recap. Um, what did I do on the weekend? So on Friday, I watched Rebel Moon Part 2. And I know the reviews, at least here in Germany, are horrible. The critics, um, they don't think it is a good movie at all. They even, or they also didn't think the first movie was good. I watched them both, obviously, and I was very well entertained. So for me, the imagery was good. I liked the action. I could live with the characters. And um, so I think it was a nice movie. I mean, if you got to pay for Netflix anyway, you might as well watch it. So um, I had fun, but I also liked uh, Batman vs. Superman, um, which was also not very well received by the critics, at least over here, but I liked it. And same thing with Justice League. So your mileage may vary, but this is what I did Friday evening. And on Saturday we had visitors, so I didn't really have time to game or record a session. But Sunday evening, um, let's get back to our little game to continue our April Solar RPG challenge using tarot cards. So I got my uh, Dungeons and Dragons tarot card deck ready. And I got my Shadow Dark RPG and I'm ready to continue. So um, just a real short recap. Our merry band of adventurers consisting of my character Terran Neldor, human adventurer. And um, let me get those names here. And our dwarf fighter, Gendry X Cleaver. We have Feya, an elven wizardress. We have Mirina, a human thief. Um, and her associate, Bram, also a human thief. And to both of them, I owe money from my days back in the thieving guild. And our Patron and employer Finyara Quickleaf, a halfling wizard. And we are on a quest for an eccentric collector and um, also the head of a large merchant's guild. His name is Lucas Pinrelli, and we are uh, on an expedition to explore a just recently uncovered tower, ruined tower that was hidden underneath the earth and uncovered by a recent flooding of this river here, the river Kelram. And this is where we are supposed to go. And um, this is where we almost are at the moment. So this green um, X, remember X marks the spot, um, is where we will rest tonight. But on our way there, and this is where we left off last session. Um, we saw up ahead on the road a little scene. Uh, a small trade caravan consisting of two carts. They are on the road going or traveling into our direction to Delma. And it looks like that they are yeah, either chatting with or stopped by a band or group of horsemen, so of, of um, people on horseback. We don't know yet exactly what is going on. What I do know as a GM, because um, this is what the encounter is, is that these horsemen are actually raiders and they're besieging this caravan right now. So they want to um, yeah, rob them, take their stuff, exert a toll, whatever. But we don't know that yet. We just see that there's something going on. And that the road is blocked. Um, of course, we could go around it, but the terrain 
to the right and left of the road is, is very uneven. So why risk damage? Why risk a, a broken wheel or an injured horse? So um, Finjala, uh, Finjara, excuse me, our halfling patron, she um, tells me and Feya, no, uh, and um, Gendry X Cleaver, maybe she she wants to to um, uh, yeah to show a little force. She asks us two to um, scout ahead to basically uh, uh, walk up uh, to this group and and see what is going on while uh, our expedition card with the rest of the group is staying put so that we can see what is going on. So this is what we are doing. So um, yeah, so we <clears throat> we approach them. And um, one little thing I did, um, like from our from my first payday, remember last session? Um, yeah, I did buy a shield, but I looked at the pawn again and I really like it if actually my character sort of fits the pawn. And so this, I mean, I only wear leather armor, so I'm lightly armored. And uh, I was, uh, one of my backgrounds is a minstrel. I was a traveling minstrel, so like a bard. I have context to the thieves guild. So long story short, this elegant rapier uh, fits the style better than a longsword. So I just reskinned the longsword. So I just made a rapier out of my longsword, but it's still a strength-based weapon. So no, um, yeah, uh, power gaming here with with making it a finesse weapon so that you could basically use decks for everything, melee, ranged, AC, whatever. So it is still a strength-based weapon. So uh, my my attack bonus is still plus two. And it deals 1d8 damage. It uses a slot just like uh, the longsword did. But it's not a longsword, it's a rapier. And the same thing I did with the shield. I reskinned it into a parrying dagger. So also takes one slot, adds plus 2 to AC. I can't throw it, I can't use it to attack. It's just a reskinned shield. So this is just to, to fit the the description or the pawn better um and to fit the character concept better but um yeah it's all the same stats um so um and it's now a silvered rapier but this is on loan because um we got this from finyara after our encounter with the werewolf but we have to to give our silvered weapons back at the end of the adventure unless we want to purchase them with our pay. That is up to us. And the same goes for the other adventurers. We all have a silvered weapon. All right, so we approach the group. And um, let's see, as we approach, um, let's first see how many there are. And I will say it's 1d6 plus 3 raiders. Oh, lucky. Roll the one plus three, so actually it's only four. Four raiders on horseback. But um, as we get closer, we can already see that there's something not right because um, those raiders, I can call them bandits, and just make up some stats real quick. They got an AC of 12, 11 from leather armor, plus one dex. They attack plus, plus one, doesn't matter if it's, uh, and they have longsword, D8, longsword. Or they have, um, and luckily the weapon table is here. They have, um, a crossbow, which also deals 1d6, two-handed and load, meaning I think you've got to use your your movement uh, to load. Let me check. Oh, short bow only deals 1d4 points of damage. Okay. 
Interesting. All right, let's let's check real quick here. Weapons. Um, dup, 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 gear 34. 34. And loading. You must forego moving to reload this weapon. Exactly. So it replaces your move. Okay. And they do have crossbows, which they also attack with plus one. So d6 crossbow. And they have HP, let's see, HP, let's give him six. And they have plus one dex, plus one strength, and the rest is just zero, plus zero. And there are four of them. So just in case, let's number them B1, B2, B3 and B4, just in case it comes to combat. Um, so yeah, we approach and as we approach, we see that there's something off because one of them has a longsword drawn and two of them have crossbows aimed at the guy sitting on top of the front card, uh, the first card, and steering it. So let's see, um, and, and one guy, so one guy is addressing them, two are pointing the crossbows at the, the, the caravan, and one guy is of course checking and, and scouting out the area, and he sees us approach. So, um, let's see if, um, yeah, how they, how they react. If they, um, if they are hostile towards us as well, which I think is pretty likely. And let me get my one page mythic here. So are they hostile or not really hostile, but um, yeah, they will react to us in, in, in some way. And I think it is very likely. So 75% for a yes. Sixty-seven. So, um, Yes, um, of course, they react to us in, in some way. So um, the guy scouting out the area, he steers his horse to one of the guys with the crossbows. They exchange uh, a few words. And then those two, so the guy with the crossbow and, and the other guy who was scouting the area, he also has got a crossbow. Um, they just move a few steps towards us, still on horseback, so with their horses, so they steer their horses. And they address us. Travelers, stop. This is, uh, there's official business going on here that does not concern you. You will be able to continue in a minute, but I must ask you to remain where you are and not come any closer. And I'm like, hmm, well, what kind of official business is it exactly that you are conducting here, if you don't mind my asking? As a matter of fact, I do mind your asking. Like I said, official business that does not concern you. We don't want any trouble with you, but I can only advise you to stay out of our affairs as well. Hmm, interesting. So I'm whispering to um, Gendry X Cleaver. Because uh, I, we obviously see that they got crossbows trained on, on, on these guys. 
uh, on top of the card and they do not really look official like they don't have any official coat of arms uniforms whatever so and my background is thieves guild one of my backgrounds because i'm a well-traveled adventurer so i uh, address gendry this looks like a standard robbery to me if you ask me and um but it looks like because there are only four of them it looks like they don't want to fight a two-front war or battle um, if you ask me we should be pretty safe if we stay out of it but then again it could be us on the other side of these crossbows once we get back from our expedition and loaded with treasure so we might as well do something against these bandits because i think the four of us five with finyara and maybe some assistance from the guys there our chances are pretty decent otherwise of course we do risk injury and casualties so what's your take on this? Mm, I think you're right. But I think we should let Finyara decide. After all, she's the one paying the bills. I don't like that scum either. But uh, consider it mean or rude. But I also... I also would be fine with just staying out of their affairs. Yeah, well, Finyara asked us to see what is going on. I think we know what is going on. So let's um, let's head back. So while we are whispering, uh, one of the guys with the crossbows goes like, What is it you're whispering? Stop talking and get back to your... To your group otherwise we will have trouble no need to get excited we will we will get back we will stay out of your business and i silently add for now and then we make our way back to our group and um, yeah we report to finyara <sighs> looks like a, a classic robbery those guys on the horses they're bandits and uh, I think they want to rob those cards. They want to take them. But also, I, I could see only four. I do not know if they're more hidden. It didn't look like they are interested in fighting a two-front battle. So they just asked us to stay out of our affairs. So, um, it is your call, Finyara. You are our patron. Or patron. Huh. Difficult decision. Yeah, we could probably take them, but not without risking injury or death. But then again, it could be us on the other end of these crossbows once we're done with our expedition and probably treasure loaden. I mean, in the interest of trade between the cities... Every good bandit, uh, every dead, only a dead bandit is a good bandit. Mm, that is also true. Ah, difficult decision, difficult decision. Ah. All right, so, hmm, damn. Difficult decision. So let's, what do you think? Let's cast a vote. And she goes like, January, what do you say? I don't care either way. Faya, I can't tolerate bullies and violence. I say we show them their place. We take them. Mirina and Bram, and since they're both thieves and only out for their own, basically, so they want to make some coin here, and 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 they're like classic opportunistic. Um, ah, but this is also maybe. I mean, what I'm saying about us being possible victims is true, but then again, also they're thieves, so they 
are only are looking out for themselves, but then again, they're also opportunistic, so it would be a good good chance to take them now while we might still have the assistance of the other group. So um, let's roll it. So it is um, for them, I roll a d10, 60% they say take him, 40% they say no. So one to six, they both say yes. Four, so they go like, I think we should seize the opportunity and, and yeah, see that we get possible assistance from the other group and take them. All right, so three for taking them, one stays out of it, so she points at me. What's your take on it? Hmm. So, yeah, what is my take on it? I'm also neutral, but I'm more lawful neutral than chaotic neutral. And I also, um, yeah, what the hell, we take him. All right, it's settled then. I think, uh, yeah, we should take them. But I will not risk our supplies. So um, the cart with the two, uh, let's call them torch bearers and equipment handlers, the two handlers stays here and we as a group of five, a group of six actually, yeah, with me a group of six. So our group of six in some sort of a intimidating formation moves towards those bandits. All right, so now the important question is, do they actually want to fight? I mean, they're outnumbered four to six, even without the other card crew or the other crew. Uh, I think actually, actually, I think it would be pretty likely that they do not take this risk. I mean, they, let's see, what do they see? They see a dwarf fighter with axe and shield and chain mail armor. They obviously see a wizard because Feya the way she is um, clothed or, or, or the kind of clothes she wears, the staff she carries, she's proud of her profession and her status. She does not hide the fact that she's a wizard and she's already a level three wizard, which is somewhat powerful. So she's got some, uh, some, uh, uh, tricks up her sleeve and I just realized I forget to put down hit points for her a uh, little oversight I gotta add those so it is uh, let's give her 10 hit points hit points 10 then those two yeah hard to tell thieves me uh, yeah all right it's an it is very likely very likely that they indeed, now that we have decided to approach them, that they will flee. It is very likely. Or a retreat, let's call it that. Sixty-eight, yes. Okay. So as we approach, they they um, ride off into the into the woods they ride off into the woods there's a small path a small trail leading into the woods and um yeah and they ride off and we approach this this other caravan two carts and um yeah so we we chat a little they go like oh Thank the gods. Um, 
let's add some shadow dark flare here let's look at there's some i think a lawful deity as well deity is 28 um saint teragnes a legendary light most lawful humans ah thank the gods thank saint teragnes for your intervention you must know these were bandits thieves thugs they wanted to to rob us and take our possessions thank the gods that you arrived and not a minute too late yeah our pleasure well did they take anything from you no we were still negotiating terms as you arrived and um they didn't they didn't take anything from us so thanks to you but i doubt or i i'm under the impression that as soon as you're gone they we will probably see them again i think this is not the last we have seen of them yeah you might be right do you have uh, escorts? We only have two armed guards. So why did you travel with only two armed guards? Well, we had we had more when we when we left Milra, but this was not the first ill fortune that we encountered. Sadly, we suffered casualties. All right. Hmm. So, um, I head over to Finyara and go like, they're right, you know. I mean, these raiders with their horses, they're faster, they know the area. They're probably watching from outside of the woods now. As soon as we're gone, they will be prey again. Hmm. Yeah, but we can't we can't afford any more delays okay so i go what do you say we offer them to come with us and then travel back together once we are done with our quest i mean it will be a delay for them but at least they will have a chance of making it back to delmar Hmm, I agree with you. Yeah, this is what we will do. All right, so um, Finyara quickly, if she goes, well, <clears throat> I'm sad to say, but I share your, uh, your assessment of the situation. I think as soon as you travel towards Delma alone, you will fall prey of these raiders again. However... We are on an important and time-sensitive quest ourselves, and we are already delayed, so we can't offer you protection in the form of an escort or traveling together to Delma, but we will or can offer you protection if you are willing to come with us first. It'll mean maybe a two or three or four day delay for you, because um, we have to complete our mission first. But at least you will have a decent chance of actually arriving in Delma with your goods. I don't know if, if your goods are time sensitive or if you got stuff that can be that can spoil, like food. But this is all we can offer you. Oh, that is a very generous offer indeed. I think we take it. We have no other choice. We already suffered casualties and I think a couple of days delay yeah, is something we have to put up with if the alternative is losing all our stuff and our lives maybe. So yeah, thank you for your kind offer and uh, we will travel with you until you have completed your quest. All right then, to the north. We... Uh, Head for the crossroads. Okay then. All right. So um, yeah, we we travel until nightfall, and um, then we make camp at 
this campsite that I have already uh, determined last session. Okay. Mm. So again, um, we make camp, so we make a little small talk, get to know each other. Um, and actually, I'm a little bit, this is OC info now, I'm a little bit torn because, of course, I could generate or roll for random encounters now, but I also want to try out this, this um, dungeon generation method that is um, in this book. And um, I also, um, I just realized that it's been quite a while since I continued my my Dragon Bane campaign and also um, quite a while um, before that, that I continued my Star Wars game. So I'm a little bit torn how, because then if... I don't want to have like three games in the works where I, where it takes weeks between the episodes. Um, so uh, I think what I will do, I will, um, I will take some some GM Levy here and um, use a well-known role-playing principle and 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 skip ahead a little and and um, yeah and. Let the rest of the journey be like some sort of cutscene and continue with the exploration of the tower. Um, yeah, so we make camp and I decide because we're such a large group now, maybe we have like two campfires, that any potential creatures or other threats mm, are put off by our indeed somewhat larger size now and um, we arrive or the rest of the journey is uneventful and we eventually arrive at the site here of this now uncovered um, sunken and now uncovered ruined tower so it is a ruined tower all right so we we set up some sort of of expedition camp and then it is time to enter the ruins and um, what I will do is I will use this procedure here of generating a shadow dark or dungeon map. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -bam. shadow dark maps, 130. One thirty. And let's take this ribbon here. Here, Shadow Dark Maps, put it in here. All right, so what you do is you roll d10 on a sheet of paper and this will be a small site because it's just like a, a ruined tower, maybe like two floors, but we start at the top and actually go to the bottom because it was, um, yeah, I don't know why, but it's uh, it was sunken in the earth. So it, you roll 5d10, one, Two, three, four, five, D ten. Yeah, five D ten on a sheet of paper. I'll be right back. Just one second. Let me get some scrap paper here. All right, so here we have a sheet of scrap paper. And now I get to roll these dice. Let me see. It's like a die drop thing. All right, 
right, so let's put this here. All right, and now this is actually pretty cool. So this is a, um, a four, which is a minor hazard. All right, so we, I just put circles around. This is a 10, seven, seven. All right, so this is a four, this is a two, this is a 10, seven, seven. All right, and then here it says what, so seven is like a monster mob. So maybe some swarm vermin monster mob. Let's see, do we have something monster mob? Yeah, okay. Ten is ooh, the boss monster. Boss monster. Four is a minor hazard. And two is empty. All right. And then you can just like connect them like a point crawl. So I say we will enter here and then it goes to here. And this is the first level. So I just make it like this so that I know. And then from here. You go down, so I put their stairs down here. In the entry level, and from here you have, basically we got two passageways. One leading to the boss monster and one to the monster mob. And let's see, do I want to connect these? Let's roll. One, two, three, they're connected as well. Four, five, six, they're not. One, two, three, they're connected as well. So there's also a connection here. So these are like small hallways, whatever. And this is basically all we need. This is the ruined tower. The ruined sunken tower. and um, stairs down exactly and so like this is like the the top top roof floor the lookout where you top roof floor and it has a trap door with a ladder that leads down into this first first room all right so let's put a ladder here Okay, so, um, yeah, and this is, um, I you could roll for all this stuff, but uh, this is like a site type is ruins. However, this is only important if you use the encounter table from the book, but since this is the tarot card challenge, I will generate um, contents and encounters using only these tarot cards. Okay, so ruins... As a theme, basically, it was a, a sunken tower. Yeah, and it is an, an unsafe site. Unsafe uh, means every three rounds, crawling rounds. Um, I will roll for a random encounter, a wandering monster, if you will. Okay. Yeah, so we make camp and we still have some daylight left, so we want to make good use of it. So, um, yeah, we can see this still half sunken ruined tower. Most of it is still buried in the earth, but um, a large chunk of 
of earth is broken away by this recent flooding but this is all like muddy and and uh, unstable terrain so there's only actually only one one way to approach uh, and this is to go on top of what was usually when this was still like up on the ground obviously the the top roof this is where we we only where we can can enter basically and um yeah so this is empty but still let's see um if there's anything unusual on this top level or maybe this trapdoor let's just draw two tarot cards and see what we get seven of charisma and the queen of charisma okay so i'm not going to look into the guidebook now because um, i want to this is both seven and queen of charisma so this means that this is some sort of personality challenge and i don't know why but this illustration here it inspires me that this is some sort of of key lock mechanism just like in a lord of the rings where they were in front of the mines of moria and here to say melloc um something like this because this was the first thing that came to my mind when i saw this this elf with this so this is what this is so there is a trap door here but it's not like a rotten and and unstable wood but reinforced it is uh, metal that is reinforced and that also features some sort of arcane symbols so for us it is pretty clear that we need some sort that this is some sort of um, of riddle or some sort of locking mechanism that needs to be overcome okay um let's see if our wizards Feya and Finyara if they know something about this kind of door let's roll green is Feya the elf and blue is Finyara and this is an intelligence roll they both have plus three and I say it's let's let's say it's 13. Oh yeah, Finara quick leave. She rolls a 19, so uh, she's seen this kind of, of lock before. So she goes, ha, huh, I know this from my studies. This is some sort of arcane locking mechanism that, um, yeah, that, that needs to be opened by a certain trigger word or keyed to to a certain personality a certain yeah aura voice whatsoever okay let's look at the spells real quick here um to see if there's some sort of spell maybe that could be used to open to open a door like that ah bup, bup, bup. casting spell spell list uh, 52 like um, knock or something or maybe a wizard spell list because we only have wizards here so yeah knock tire two knock mm, let's see knock mm. And I think Feya, level 3, she might know a Baba, knock. Instant. A door, window, gate, chest or portal you can see within range instantly opens, defeating all mundane locks and barriers. This spell creates a loud knock audible to all within earshot. Okay, so... um. 
Because of the nature of this lock, however, I say it is not a mundane lock. But still, I will. Let's first check, I think, though, however, that um, she might, as a level 3 wizard, has access to tire 2. And if she does, I just rule that she knows knock, because it's a useful spell. Um, level 3 wizard, yes. So level 3 wizard is, you know, one tire 2 spell. But I, all, I think I already determined that last session that she knows a a combat spell but you know what i'm the gm and she's an elf i just rule that she knows several spells and um <laughs> and that she knows knock as well and but and now the but because it's not a mundane lock she has to roll with this advantage and the casting roll is 10 plus tire and the tire is 2 so the dc is 12 let's check again 44 yeah so it's a dc 12 intelligence casting role but with this advantage because it's not a mundane lock it is some sort of magical lock so Feya goes like hmm, all right so I know a spell, but I do not know if this spell works on this kind of caliber of a lock, if you say this is something arcane. But maybe my magic is strong enough to overcome it. So um, I might as well try. So plus five with disadvantage. I gotta use the lower one. <laughs> Epic fail, a mishap. Okay, so there's something here. Spell mishaps. Um, ba -ba -ba. Damn. Casting spells again, 44. Mishap. Critical failure. If you roll a natural one, the spell does not take effect. If it was a focus spell, the spell immediately ends. If the spell was a wizard spell, you can cast that spell again until you successfully complete a rest. You must also roll on the wizard mishap table corresponding to the spell's tire. See page 46. All right. Tire 1, 2, D12. Okay. Uh, let's roll it. Eleven energy surge. You glow bright purple for ten rounds, granting enemies advantage on attacks against you. Energy surge. All right. So the following happens. Feya, she concentrates. And she conjures the arcane words and she weaves the arcane strands and casts her spell on the trapdoor. And this loud knock that is created by this spell can be heard all over the countryside. And But then somehow you can see some sort of arcane reflection from the door cast back to her and she suddenly glows in a bright purple light which won't go away. And she goes like, damn, what was that? This seems to be powerful warding magic. I can't can't open it. At least not today. I need to rest. Uh, all right. So, Jendry goes, okay, so we tried the arcane. Let's try brute force now. You probably got the crowbar or anything with you, right? I mean, this is an expedition after all. 
Yeah, I got one. I say because in my adventurous crawling kit, I replaced the 10 iron spikes with a crowbar because I think this is more useful in a dungeon environment. So yeah, I do got a crowbar. So it's strapped to the side of my backpack. So we get the crowbar out. All right, so let's do it. All right, so this is strength, but also with disadvantage. No, usually you get advantage because of the crowbar, but it's disadvantage because of this magical lock and barrier. And so it is a normal roll DC 15. And the dwarf does it. He's got strength plus three. It's a DC 15. So he's strength and 16 plus three is 19. So he goes like, and bam, suddenly, maybe, maybe the door was weakened because of the spell. We don't know. But he uh, opens it, but so that there's some some sort of price to it. As the the door opens with some maybe last arcane protective mechanism, whatever the crowbar used to open the trap door is shattered into a thousand metal pieces. And um, it's gone. Damn. So my crowbar is gone. But maybe we got another one because, I mean, we got a couple of, of, of caravans here now. All right, so that was this challenge or obstacle. So we managed to to open this this door, and there we can see. Yeah, it's it's not a ladder; it's a steep steep stone stairway leading down into a round circular chamber below which contains a minor hazard. And I will again ask the Oracle what a minor hazard is. But um, let's see here. I, I'm not sure if there's some sort, there's a minor hazard, um, some sort of, of damage scale for, for a minor hazard, because it should be somewhat balanced at least so let's uh, so for the type of hazard i will use the tarot cards but let's see for the severity of the hazard if there's some sort of um, table in here um di, 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 di. hazards 115 115 okay yeah so what I really like about this book, this book is really an all-in-one package. I mean, it contains the rules, the monsters, but also the generation tables. So this is basically everything you need. So hazard, hmm, damage, movement, traps, damage or effect, minor hazard. Hmm. All right, so it doesn't say state any any damage. It only traps. So the all right, let's say it's just 1d4 points of damage. 1d4 points of damage. Whatever the hazard is, I will I will determine that um, now by drawing oracle card, uh, tarot cards. So again, two cards. The Hierophant, no idea what that is. And Justice, okay. Let's look at the guidebook here to get some inspiration. The Hierophant. Using spiritual understanding and wisdom to perceive the world. Okay, spiritual understanding and wisdom and justice. Justice. 
your capacity to create a new reality through shattering old limited beliefs. Hmm, a new reality, shattering all the limiting beliefs. Okay, new and spiritual under. Okay, I know what this is. All right, so this is a psychic hazard, like a psychic trap, where everybody that that basically enters and and walks down these stairs is haunted with very personal, fearful, psychic delusions. It's like, um, I don't know, have you seen um, here the Witcher Blood Origins when they had to cross this pond to get to the, the healer and everybody had like these, these visions of some deeply troubling or, or uh, this is what this is. So, um, Everybody has to, to resist some sort of willpower role. And I'm still not sure if this is int or wisdom. Wisdom, usually it is wisdom, but could also be intelligence because of, you know what? I roll it. I roll it. Uh, one, two, three, it's intelligence. Four, five, six, it's wisdom. All right, one, two, three is intelligence. So it is an intelligence role that we have to do in order to resist this, this psychic damage. And because it's a minor hazard, the DC is only 12. And if we fail, we take one D4 points of psychic damage. All right, so it's intelligence. Um, all right, so let's make a note here. So actually, this is more like a trap than a hazard, but who cares? The cards have spoken. Psychic damage, DC 12 int, D4 damage. Okay, so DC 12 int. Uh, I got plus zero, 17. <laughs> So I resist these strange and weird delusions, but um, where is my party here? But I will roll for all of them. So intelligence, DC 12. So for the dwarf, no bonus for the dwarf. DC 12. He fails. 1d4 points of damage for the dwarf. One point of damage. Lucky. So he's at 15 HP. Ah, Faya, the elf. Plus 3 int, DC 12. Ah, but she fails because she, of course, she's already weakened because of her spell mishap. What would be fitting if she also suffers maximum damage now? No, she doesn't. Two points of damage. However, she only got 10 HP. So, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, her mind is rebelling against her, but she manages to pull through, but not unscathed. So, Mirena and Brahm. I roll for both of them together. Mirena is blue and they all have plus zero. Mirena is blue. She makes it, of course, because uh, women are smart. And Brahm, he fails. And he suffers 1d4 points of damage. And he only has seven hit points. That's the thing about thieves. <laughs> and he suffers the maximum damage. Okay, so he's at three hit points. So he, uh, so as he comes out of it, he's in shock. He is covered in, in cold sweat and, and his eyes are, uh, he is totally in panic and, and we need a lot of effort to, to calm him down. And now finally, Finyara. She also has plus three. 
but also eight plus three she doesn't make it she also suffers damage oh and she only has four hit points damn because she's a level one wizard uh, uh, please not a four and it is a four oh a nice cliffhanger here so she she sudden she screams in terror ah! and, and suddenly ah! Ah! her breathing stops it's like as if she got a heart attack or some sort of stroke or whatever and then she just <laughs> face first onto the stone stairway <laughs> blood because her face is busted open because she just fell like a like a wet bag on the stone stair stairway which is also steep as I said and there's no more movement and this is where we leave this session so we will continue next session and um, yeah I hope you had fun good timing i'm uh, at an hour almost an hour one minute so yeah i hope you enjoyed this episode and um yeah please bear with me here i will continue my other games soon if you are um waiting for that but i want to complete this tarot challenge and i also want to get more into shadow dark just to get more familiar with the system but i can also do this off camera but um yeah i want to continue this at at least finish this exploration here so bear with me and um yeah thanks for watching and of course if you enjoy what you've seen here tonight please consider subscribing liking sharing all this social media stuff that you do and yeah see you in the next video and as always stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.